a tutti. Hello and welcome to the next video. Uh, my name is Carrie Wood and I own Ultimate Italy Tours. So I just want to say thanks first of all for all the questions and comments you sent from the last video and I'm going to take some time later and answer, um, answer those. For now let's recap the last video and then we'll get into what we're going to talk about today. We learned about the three keys to a stress-free trip to Italy. Planning your time, researching, and avoiding pickpockets. Those three things right there should help you minimize almost all of your stress. Granted, there still probably will be some because you can't plan for everything, but that's a good start. Fortunately for you, I learned all this the hard way by doing it alone so you don't have to. I'll be honest, I've never actually had anything pickpocketed, but I have tried to cram too much activities into one trip and miss sites that I later found out were pretty cool. Now that I go to Italy and help people experience the country as a profession, none of these things happen to me anymore. And I want to help you have the best experience in Italy you can without making any of these mistakes. So now that you know how to have a virtually stress-free trip to Italy, let's talk about the first step to making it more than just a check mark on a bucket list. Over the next two videos, I will show you exactly how I do this, but for today, I'm going to explain some very important words when it comes to traveling. View versus visit versus experience. Now, you might be wondering, why am I spending an entire video defining these words for you? Uh, well, because I don't just want to explain the difference, hopefully I'm going to show you. Also, so you're informed enough to make the right decision when planning your trip to Italy. For just about every location, there are three ways to see it. From the outside, from the inside, and through stories and facts. And I'm going to try and show you the difference between these. As you can see from these pictures, I'm going to show you the Roman Forum Palatine Hill as my example for these explanations. First, let's talk about viewing the Roman Forum. When you view the Roman Forum, you see it from the outside. This word will pop up quite often when you're researching tour companies or guided walking tours. Um, they do show you the location and tell you quite a bit about it, but they don't take you inside where you can see and appreciate the grandness of it. Instead, you elbow out some space, like in this picture, uh, to see the, this magnificent place from on Capitol Hill, uh, which is really an awesome viewpoint, but still not inside. You also miss out on seeing Palatine Hill, which they don't show you at all. Um, let's check out the view and I'll explain a few things to you. First, we're going to look at the Temple of Castor and Pollux. As you can see, there are the three columns uh, below the title of it. It was built in 484 BC to commemorate the victory of Aulus Postumius over the Latins. The three columns are Corinthian and date back to the area of Tiberius and Hadrian. Next, we're going to look at the Basilica Julia, which is right below the Temple of Castor and Pollux. And it was built by Julius Caesar in the mid-first century BC. It was enormous. It had five naves and even movable partitions. That way, there could be more than one audience at a time. Now in the center, you can see the Via Sacra. This was the route that led through the central part of the Forum and went to Capitoline Hill. Later, it was the route between the Colosseum and Capitoline Hill. And it was where the triumphal processions happened. You can see the Colosseum at the top, just under the word Colosseum. Um, it's that little bit of a white building poking out. Now we're going to talk about the Temple of Saturn. It was erected uh, by the consul Titus Larchus on 17th December uh, BC. It was a public treasury and also held sacred treasures underground in an underground chamber. Last, over on the far left, is the Arch of Septimius Severus. It was erected in honor of Septimius and his sons, Caracalla and Geta. The inscription recalls an imperial tragedy, which was when Caracalla murdered his brother Geta in order to become emperor. Later, he removed his brother's name from everything in Rome so that he would be forgotten. I hope you enjoyed that quick overview of the Roman Forum from Capitoline Hill. The other way you will see locations is by visiting them. 
And by visiting them, I mean you go inside the location. So if you see that the Roman Forum is listed on a tour, a guided tour, walking tour, um, and it says visit the Roman Forum, you're going inside. Now remember, viewing the Roman Forum is from the outside. Uh, you'll be either dropped off to go in on your own, or you will have a guide taking you in. Be sure to know which one you're getting uh, with your purchase, because it might not be so clear in the brochure. Also, remember not all guides are creative equal. Another way to think about view versus visit is in terms of cost. Would you pay the same amount to see a site from the outside versus going in? And would you pay the same amount to see it with a guide versus going in by yourself? We now find ourselves inside the Roman Forum, standing on the oldest street in Rome, the Via Sacra. We follow in the steps of Romans during a triumphal parade, and we can see the magnitude of the buildings, even though many are only rubble. Right now, we are at the level of the original forum, and if you look at the ground, you can see huge, old, round paving stones. Next, we find ourselves at the Temple of Antoninus and Faustina, one of the most impressive of all temples left standing today. As you can see, there are ten huge monolithic Corinthian columns that were the original entrance to the temple. Now the temple has been turned into a church, and as you can see, that green door looks like it's just floating above nothing. That's because that was the original level of the ground when it was turned into a church. Last, I want to show you something from Palatine Hill. Uh, now, Palatine Hill is pretty cool. It has a lot of stuff, but I'm just going to quickly show you this stadium. It was used as a hippodrome for horse or chariot racing, probably to get ready for Circus Maximus. Some people believe it also might have been just a garden, but it looks like a hippodrome to me. The last way to see a location is to have it come to life, and as I've said before, finding the right guide or the right tour can transport you back in time. Imagine yourself in the year 71 AD. It's night in the city of Rome, but instead of closing down and settling in behind locked doors, people are out. There's a buzz in the air. Shopkeepers are decorating their porticos, and families are claiming their places for the next day's triumph parade. As you walk down the street to join your family, Squadrons of soldiers pass by on their way to muster in the Field of Mars, just outside the Sacred Wall on the west bank of the Tiber River. Here, the entire procession is lining up, including Vespasian and his sons Titus and Domitian. Before sunrise, all are ready to begin the painfully slow, steady parade through the city to celebrate the devastation of Jerusalem and the end of civil disorder. You make your way to an area close to the forum amongst the crowds to await the spectacle. By now, it's standing room only. The entire city is closed for this holiday, yet every temple open with incense burning. Imagine crowds so thick it's difficult to move. Imagine the smells of a half a million people sweating in their best tunics as the day wears on and the sun gets hotter. The entire city is either in attendance or part of the procession. So many people it's difficult for marchers and floats to pass by. Finally, the parade is getting closer and the crowd starts to flex and move to get a better view. By the time the first rows of captives get to you, they have already passed through the triumphal gate along the triumphal way. They have passed Circus Maximus and get to you as they head down the sacred way and into the forum towards Capitol Hill and the Temple of Jupiter. You strain to see line after line of prisoners walking by, heavy in chains, wearing clothes so beautiful your eyes never notice their disfiguring injuries. In this group is a man led by Noose and Lash. He is the leader of the enemy. Behind them, a river of wealth like you've never before seen. Weapons, armor, gold, treasure, paintings, and so much more pass by. In the distance, you can see floats so grand, they look as though they could collapse under their own weight at any second. Some floats nearing three or four stories high, many covered in gold cloth and adorned with ivory, all depicting different cities and scenes from the story of the war. Imagine looking up to the sky as they pass while they block the sun from you momentarily. 
Cheers growing closer tell you that soon you will see Vespasian himself up on his mighty chariot pulled by four white horses. He is wearing traditional all purple robes embroidered with gold thread and carrying an ivory scepter in one hand while laurel boughs rest in his opposite arm. On his head is the crown of Jupiter. Titus, the eldest son, rides close behind on another great chariot, and finally the youngest child, Domitian, atop a mighty horse. They continue past you to the Temple of Jupiter on Capitol Hill to await the news of the death of the enemy leader, hung for war crimes in a place near the Forum. The crowd erupts in cheers with the announcement of his end, and thus begins the sacrifices. Hopefully you can see from these different ways to see the Forum that they're not the same. So seeing it from the outside and having someone tell you facts and seeing it from the inside and having someone tell you a few facts is completely different than when you go in with someone who can really bring it to life and tell you a story that's historically accurate and bring, bring something to it that you might not have seen. Now you know how to plan your trips to be stress-free and you know that having experiences and memories can make your trip come to life. But how do you create those experiences? In the next video, I'm going to share with you three keys to experiencing Italy. You won't want to miss it because I'm going to share my secrets to getting into locations that are closed to the public and how I find the best guides. Thanks for taking the time today to watch this video and please leave a comment or question at the bottom of the blog or on the social media sites listed. Okay, go ahead. Go do it. Leave your comment right now. Thanks, everyone. Ciao, ciao.